So 25% increase. So now the question is like, how do you improve? So what are the things that improve those? So now here we do this by comparing low to high achievers and other metrics. So if you look at low muscle mass versus high muscle mass, what is the improvement? And it's pretty significant, it's about 3X. So if you compare low muscle mass people to high muscle mass people as they age, the low muscle mass people have about a 3X hazard ratio or 200% increase in all-cause mortality. Now, if you look at the data more carefully, you realize that it's probably less the muscle mass fully doing that, and it's more the high association with strength. And when you start to tease out strength, you can realize that strength could be probably three and a half X as a hazard ratio, meaning about 250% greater risk if you have low strength to high strength. High strength is the ability to move loads at 80 to 90% so it's all of defined, one it's, it's all defined by given studies. So some the most common things that are used are actually, you know, they're used for the purposes of experiments that make it easy to do. I don't even think they're the best metrics. So they're usually using like grip strength, um, leg extensions, and like wall sits, squats, things like that. Okay. So how long can you sit in a squatted position at 90 degrees without support? Would be a great demonstration of quad strength, a leg extension, um, you know, how much weight can you hold for how long relative to body weight, things like that. Um, you know, we, we have a whole strength program that we do with our patients. We have something called the SMA. So it's the Strength Metrics Assessment. And we put them through 11 tests that um, are really difficult. You know, like a dead hang is one of them. Like how long can you dead hang your body weight, stuff like that. So. We're trying to be more granular in that insight, but tie it back to these principles. If you look at cardiorespiratory fitness, it's even more profound. So um, if you look at people who are in the bottom 25% for their age and sex in terms of VO2 max, and you compare them to the people that are just at the 50th to 75th percentile, um, you're talking about a 2x difference roughly in, um, in, in, in the risk of ACM. If you compare the bottom 25% to the top 2.5%. So you're talking about, you know, bottom quarter to the elite for a given age. Um, you're talking about 5X, wow. 400% difference in all-cause mortality. That's probably the single strongest association I've seen for any modifiable behavior. Incredible. So uh, when you say elite, these are uh, people that are running marathons at a pretty rapid clip? Not necessarily. It's just like what the VO2 max is for that. Like my VO2 max would be in the elite for my age group. Uh, my VO2 max, you know, but, but again, it's, I'm, I'm training very deliberately to make sure that it's in that. So I wouldn't consider myself elite at anything anymore, but I still maintain a VO2 max that is elite for my age. I, I consider you an elite uh, physician and <laughs> end guy all around, but true. Um, but in terms of, okay, so for but the, the point is like, you don't have to be a world-class athlete to be elite 